What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Copart for another Copart walk around. Let's jump into this today with number one on my list. How about a Ford freaking Ranger, 1998? It's gonna be the uh, AutoZone or O'Reilly's edition, I believe is what this is. It's probably got some, oh yeah, 254,000 miles. Yeah, they don't let these things go until there's like nothing left of them. So <laughs> this is, this is one that's been, uh, it's been worked, I have no doubt. So far I see two good tires. Yeah, she's, she's beat up pretty good, man. Uh, and the paint is all gone. The bed is just tore up. But, I mean, it's got four wheels. It's probably a 2.3 liter little four cylinder. We'll check the inside out here in a minute. But the inside of these is usually trashed as well. Yep, a little 2.3 timing belt motor. Great little work truck, man. That's what this is. That's what I see anyway. I see a, I see a great little work truck. I see potential. There we go. We're just gonna sit that right there. Well, let's see if she's got any power. Not to worry. I got the booster pack, just in case she decides to be uh, difficult. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my, guys. There's no floor. Wow. There's no seat either. You're not kidding. These, these guys weren't screwing around. The floor is gone. Wow, okay. Okay. I don't think she's got power. I'm certain she doesn't have power. She's the manual variety. A four, five speed. I was gonna say I only saw one, two, three, four with O drive, so she's a she's a five speed. E-brake seems to work. Let's put the key in. Again, I'm certain we got no power here at all, but boy, she's uh she's been worked. She's been worked hard. I'll be damned. It didn't even need a jump, really. And the stick? That feels nice. Doesn't even feel wore out. No kidding. I hear air conditioning. Yeah, max AC is on and I heard the compressor kick in. Give that a minute. This window should work. Of course it does. Yeah, well, you know. Power steering? Yeah, power brakes. Yeah, clutch. Feels nice and strong. Good oil pressure. Good voltage. And it's got a little bit of gas. I'm going to turn this air down, though. AC works, guys. I just shut it off. AC works. Power steering whines a little bit. You know, <laughs> it's... It's a... It's not a pretty truck not a pretty truck not at all but I hate to call it a clunker or a junker or a beater with a heater but I mean that's just face reality that's what this is this is a beater with a heater and an air conditioner and she seems to run absolutely great listen to that she purrs like a kitten man and she probably gets down the road just fine. I know to a lot of you, looking at something like this is just like, why? There are plenty of people out there that would be so happy and thankful to have something like this just to get them around, especially with an air conditioner. I know the air conditioning isn't something that uh, we're gonna need for a while. It's getting nice. I've got my jacket on. That's how chilly it is out here. But you know, come summertime, you're gonna appreciate having that heater now, I don't know what you're going to do about that giant hole in the floor, but if it was me, I'd throw a piece of three-quarter inch plywood on that bad boy, and I'd call it a day. Tailgate works. You got to open the handle to close it. You know what I mean? It doesn't close on its own anymore. You got to pull the handle, close it, and then let off. And then she's good and latched. Yeah, it may not be much, but uh, for those of you that don't know, and I think most of you do, there was a point in my life where I was homeless. I lived in a tent with two of my kids at a lake it was bad times it was real bad times and before everybody gets judgmental no i wasn't on drugs uh don't get me wrong i did my fair share of that uh prior to those days uh, i was in construction my boss 
whose name was Lonnie Beal from uh, Beal's Realty. I can't remember where they were. I think they were in Yukon or, or El Reno or something. It was Beal Realty. Lonnie Beal died and we lived <laughs> our job. He had us in a condominium. We got a paycheck. I mean, that man took good care of us and we did our job. We took good care of him. And when he passed away, very quickly, because we didn't have a lease or anything, his wife was ready to get rid of all the property, sell everything and make a whole bunch of money. So uh, we were put out. We were put on the street. And I'm telling you, I remember. I remember very well. I had a Lincoln, Lincoln Continental probably like an 89 variety or something like that 91 so i don't remember but a black lincoln continental i end up having to sell the cars we needed money i made a big mistake a terrible mistake we were staying in hotels because we needed to put a roof over our heads and i ended up selling the car to pay for the hotel well guess what happened without the car it makes it hard to get to work it makes it difficult to go find a job i ended up in a bad position living at a lake no roof over my head with two kids and no car so let me tell you something before you go judging an old beater like this, I can tell you from my own personal experience, if somebody had looked at me and said, hey, man, I see times are tough for you. Take this, go get you a job. This could have made such a big difference in my life. And to tell you the truth, a buddy of mine, Sean McCoy, you guys don't think I've ever met him. He kind of saved me back then because he did just that. It, it was an old Cutlass Sierra, and the whole front end was smashed and missing on it. And he gave me that car for free, and it was all he had to give, but he gave me that car. And that tore up, smashed car with no tags, no insurance, and no title, that car got me a job. That car got me to work. That car changed my life. So before you pass judgment on some little beater truck like this, just remember that. Sometimes a cheap beater can be the difference between losing everything or making it in life. Well, next on my list is missing. So I'm wandering around trying to find the, the next vehicle. When I wander upon this, another one. Are you kidding me? What year? This is an 11. It's a little bit newer generation. I, I think realistically though, they're still pretty much the same. I wanted to check this one out too. This is a run and drive. This one's got 300,000 miles on the odometer. It's got really good tires. The other one had okay tires. These are really good. Again, looks like the AutoZone variety or the O'Reilly's. Got a special little hitch thing on the back there that you could add some extra cargo to if you wanted. Again, I'm sure it's a 2.3 liter. Crosswind Eco, very nice tires. Body looks good, paint looks good. This one, this is way nicer. This is. This is way now. Are you kidding me? It's got the original papers. Look at this. This has the window sticker still with it. Wow. Total vehicle options, uh, 19,655. This was 20 grand for O'Reilly Auto Parts. There it is right there. Sold to O'Reilly Auto Parts. So it looks like O'Reilly is uh, releasing some of these. So what I'm gonna do, somebody took all this out and they threw it on the ground just kind of rude uh, we'll put it back in the glove box because if we don't win it somebody would probably like to have all that paperwork that's still in good condition this one I'm highly interested in because I think this one is in far better shape than the other one I'm still interested in the other one too but if I had to pick one I mean which one would you pick this one has 300,000 miles but it still has a seat I think it still has the floor yes it still has it still has a floor so this one I think I would take over the other. It's a little bit newer too. Oh, it's an automatic as well. It was in reverse. That's nice. Someone left it sitting in reverse. It fires right up too. Are you kidding me? Uh, Castor oil change, February of 22 at 294,000 miles. So this thing has recently been on the road because it's just now at 294. 105 and it's due at 294 926 so technically speaking it's not even due for an oil change yet let's turn the ac on let's see what that does can we pop the hood where's the hood pop there there it is does the window go down of course it does these manual windows nine times out of ten they work 
power steering, power brakes feel good. Make sure it's in park. We'll set that e-brake just as a, I've already been run over a couple times and honestly, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of it. It was fun for content for a little bit. It's, it's not fun anymore. I'm not enjoying it. So let's take a peek under the hood here. We got the, oh, that's a different 2.3 liter, isn't it? Okay, so there's a big difference between this one and the other one. This engine is totally different. The other one is a, uh, I believe the other one's a 2.3 single overhead cam, but this is a twin cam. The other one is a timing belt motor. This is timing chain. So there's a big difference between these, uh, these two trucks. One thing that is similar though, AC works. You can see and hear that compressor kicking in. No oil leaks, no funny smells, no funny noises. This thing is running absolutely great, like a little beast. Yeah, that AC is ridiculously cold. We'll turn that off because it's already cold outside. So we don't need, we don't need that. You know what we didn't do? We didn't put the other one in gear, did we? To check the clutch? It's got backup sensors. Are you kidding me? She goes right into gear too, guys. She does. Does the radio work? Yeah, he had bad drops. Air, air conditioner works, radio works, windows work, parking brake works, and it fires right up. And no check engine light. No airbag, no nothing. 300,000 miles. Yeah. Ugh. Why? I almost hate finding really good deals because I just don't have the money to buy them all. There's like six or seven more that I'm looking at at another auction that I would love to get my hands on. I don't have enough money to buy all of these things if I wanted to. And I am finding some really, really good deals lately, guys. Before we move on to the next one, we need to go back and check the other one real quick and see how the clutch is in the transmission. All right, coming back to this one, this one's definitely a whole lot rougher, but like I said, uh, there's somebody out there that could really use something like this. Rough or not, they wouldn't care. Let's let's throw the key in here real quick. Yeah, th this one is pretty rough. But... what she does, she fires right up to... Let's turn that e-brake off. Oh, I can't, I can't do that with my shoulder. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Let's see, does she move? Yes, she does. Brakes feel great. Reverse. Not an issue, man. And let's check the clutch. Let's put it in fifth gear. Slowly let off the clutch while we're holding the brake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That clutch isn't slipping. The, the reason I do that, I think most of you probably know, but if you're trying to check the status of the clutch on a vehicle, if you put it in its, in its highest gear, like fifth gear, sixth gear, whatever, whatever gear that is, and then you hold on to the brake and you start letting off the clutch. If you've got a clutch that is slipping really badly, it could stay running. It could literally just keep running. You could let off and you'll start slipping and burning the clutch. If you got a good clutch though, you should gently let off that clutch and it should gradually stall the engine. So I have no doubt that this thing is a good one. I have no doubt the other one is a good one. So I'm gonna keep both of those on my list. <laughs> And who knows, maybe we could get them super cheap and turn them into giveaway cars. Last on my list, a repossession. No, you don't say. That's not a repo. Yeah, I think it is. A Ford Focus. And somebody... <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. Repo sent to auction. Yeah, I'll say so repo on the back window now somebody really liked red so they painted the rear drums red they painted the mirror caps red they painted the caliper and brake pad red as well they took the headlights apart and painted the inside of them red they put little bitty light strips on the front bumper there yeah yeah, they had all the money to do all of this stuff, but they didn't make their car payment. <laughs> okay, well, 
things happen. Now, what do you think the chances are before we get in that the interior is painted all red as well? Well, so far so good. This is actually nice. It smells a little smoky. It does smell like, eh, a little bit of cigarettes, maybe a little bit of Mary Jane. But honestly, the interior is really nice on this. I'm surprised, and it's not all painted red either. Wow, okay. Some cigarette burns in the seats. Not too bad, 105,000 miles. Also not too bad. Aren't these notorious for uh, transmission problems? I can't remember. What year is this? Hold on. 2014? Okay, that's honestly not bad at all. Where's the key? Oh, come on. Someone took the key? Here. <laughs> they sure did. They sure did. Wait, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. I found it. They did. They took the key. They took the key. See how they ripped it off? You can see what they did here. They literally ripped the ring off of here because they didn't want somebody being able to start it. So they figured you'll come in here and you won't find the key. So you know what I'm going to do? I hate, I despise thieves. This is thievery is what it is. You're, this is theft. I know that you hid the key down under the seat there, but you're, you are trying to impact the amount of money the vehicle will bring at auction by not having a key. Fires right up. I'm gonna put that key right back on this right here because the auction should be fair, guys. If you can't afford to buy a car fairly, then you are not in the right business. Get out, get out or go buy something that you can't afford. Don't try screwing pe with people's cars. It pisses me off. As a seller, I understand that you need every dollar you can get out of these things. And when somebody comes out and, and jacks the key and hides it from you, you know, it really impacts what people are willing to spend at the auction to buy your cars. Come on, man. How hard is it just to be decent? I, I don't understand. It seems so hard for people to be decent anymore. Important window works. Less important window also works. Power steering feels good. Brakes, yes, feels good as well. I don't mind paying a little more on a fair auction. I don't. I mean, I overpay for anything anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But it's it's wrong to rip people off like that. Oh, household white silicon for the for the headlight bezels. Yeah, that's 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 what it should be, I suppose. Oh boy, the brake reservoir cap is missing as well. I'm sure no moisture is getting in there. None, right? No, I'm sure. I'm sure that's perfectly fine to have water in your brakes. Yeah, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. The body doesn't look too bad. It really doesn't. It's got one decent tire. That one needs replaced. That one needs replaced. That one, that one's fine. That one will get you by. So it definitely needs two tires. I would do a brake flush because that's not something you should screw with. I would definitely get a brake flush done on this ASAP, get the cap replaced. And that's assuming she doesn't have a problem with the transmission. Let's turn on the uh, air conditioning, see if it works. Let's put it into gear. Yeah, not a problem. Back up. Uh-oh. Oh. She has no reverse. It's got drive. Nope. She's got no reverse. And that's a wrap. I called it before I even looked at it. Before I even looked at it, I called it. So here's I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this key back where it came from. I'm gonna smash the little thing down on top of it so it doesn't come off again. If it comes off, it's because somebody's out here uh, trying to take advantage. Which, you know, I guess if you got to be shady to make a living or that's your way of business, then so be it. 
But uh, karma's a bear, man. Karma will come back and get you. Believe that. Overall, not too bad looking of a car. Um, but this one is not for me. And I think we're done. That's it. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch my video. And occasionally I go on these little rants, on these little spiels. And I, I appreciate you listening or fast forwarding, whatever the case may be. Uh, sometimes I, I see things that jog a memory, man. And, and it gets me thinking, especially lately with all the things going on. It's just, I, I've been thinking a lot uh, about a lot of things. Uh, really doing a lot of deep thinking lately. And uh, maybe I feel like sharing some of that with you could help somebody. Maybe there's somebody out there watching that needs to hear something like that. So keep your head up. Times are tough, man. But believe me when I tell you, if I could get through it, you get through it too. Just keep on keeping on. Remember remember Joe Dirt? You guys ever watched Joe Dirt? Never mind. Anyway, he was kind of kind of my hero because I'm that kid from the trailer park back in the day. Joe Dirt with that mullet, man. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, though, do me a favor, guys. Hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Subscribe to the channel. That goes a long way to support the channel. Share the video with your friends. Don't forget, we're going to be doing some giveaways here in the near future. So you're going to want to follow me on Instagram. Link down below the video. Click that follow me on Insta. Subscribe because you have to do those two things. That's, that's the only requirements. All you got to do, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram. And when we start doing these giveaways, you know, we'll, uh, we'll do some independent videos separate for each car that we're giving away. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully it does some good. Hopefully we make some people really happy. And hopefully the rest of you enjoy watching the content. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.